Mark Davies, that, that, that's a terrific win. It was. I mean, that was a very complete performance and, and I felt probably our best performance of the season in four-day cricket. Um, the nice thing is that everybody contributed and everybody sort of played their parts in the win. So it was a really, really strong win for us. When I spoke to you at the end of the second day, you still felt this could be a result in this match. But at lunch on the third day, I was thinking, there's no way there's going to be a result. Well, Just I think with the bowling lunch. attack that we have, you know, I know... I'm, I know we lost Steve there as well, so it was quite hard to lose one of your front-hand bowlers, but I still felt with the attack we had that we could put them under pressure. Um, we knew the pitch was going to slightly deteriorate, like it does over four days, and, and we felt if we could keep going and keep coming and keep, keep, uh, keep staying strong with the ball, we always had a chance of winning, and that you know, proved to be right. Chris Nash skipped for this game. I was impressed by the way he, he juggled the bowlers around, and particularly by the way that he got Steve and Van Seel into the attack, because that just seemed to, to stem the flow of runs and created some pressure. It did, he bowled beautifully. You know, obviously, with Steve with a man down, you, know, you need somebody to step up and do that job. And I felt that through the period that we weren't taking wickets, I felt that Stian held the game for us, and so did Avisa. So it was, as I say, from the, the four fast bowlers we played, um, to lose one and then you have Stian doing that job and, and I felt when we weren't getting wickets we kept the game nice and tight and kept the game tight and, and close and they stopped scoring. So I think if you do that over a period of time then when you get the wickets uh, they come quite quickly and we prove, we sort of proved that we can do that over long periods of time as well. And in terms of Worcester, let's face it, they're into this game unbeaten, they'd won four yeah. out of four. Well they're a good team, you know, they have been a good team for a long time, they've been up and down in first division then come back down in second division so they're certainly one of the best teams in the league. And we've shown against Durham and them that if we do get it together with both bat and ball, we, we're a dangerous team, we can turn anyone over. Um, I just, once again, I think it was a, a complete performance from the team. I think, I think in cricket you often have outstanding performances from individuals in a game, and there were a couple of those, but I think generally the team were outstanding. Everybody did their role for the team, and everyone, everybody did what we asked them. So it was, it was really, really encouraging from our perspective, from a coaching perspective. Chris Nash has already said, you know, it was a terrific win here against Durham, then a disappointment against Kent when yeah. we didn't play as well, a good performance here. Is it now about consistency, Mark? Definitely. I think, I think against Kent, uh, against Kent and Tunbridge Wells was a, was a strange one, really, because if you lose four wickets early doors, which can, can happen in England, it happens, you know, the ball nips around. If you happen to lose sort of four or five wickets up front against a new ball, it makes life really, really difficult. I felt we bowled really well on day one at Kent. And could have had them sort of 80 for six as well. So it's a nature of county cricket. But um, yes, I think consistency is called for. And if we play to that standard and the standard we played against Durham, I think it would be a really hard team to beat. Um, let's talk about uh, Steve McGoffin. We know he's had a scan. What, yeah. what, I know we, we don't know the result of that. What, what's your thoughts looking ahead to Steve's injury? Well, it's an Achilles injury, so that's, that's always a tricky one, really. You know, it's, it's, not a, it's not a straightforward one. It's, there's not a lot of tissue around Achilles, so it's quite hard work. Um, he's had his scan this afternoon. We haven't got the results back, so as soon as we know more about the result in the scan, we can, we can, we can make a comment on that. Um, Vernon Philando, one more game to go yeah. before he goes to join South Africa. What are your plans for replacing Vernon, if there are indeed any? Could that be influenced by Steve, for example? Uh, well, not really. We don't have the money at the moment. We don't have the budget to get another one in. Um, we decided to go with Vern for the first bit. We felt it was going to suit his bowling. It suited both parties because he's preparing for a test match as well. So it's great to have Vernon. Yes, we have one more game. And then when he goes, we, we're going to play our lads. You know, and, that's, you know, and that's the way we'll go. And I think that's good because we get, we get more of our young players into the game as well, which I think is important. So we've got the likes of uh, Stu Whitting, who's playing in the second team. Adam Sikanda, George Garten is back from um, England Lions next week as well. So we do have yeah. young fast bowlers that we want to blood. So uh, I think to get somebody in to replace Vern isn't going to happen. So we'll, we'll, we'll use what we have and we've certainly got enough to, to be an effective team. Um, other injuries? Uh, ben Brown at the moment. How's Ben progressing? Brown is a couple of weeks away still. Um, once again, he tried to have a hit uh, with a bat and his fingers are very sore. So it's going to be all down to pain, pain level and how much he can tolerate. So at the moment he's struggling still for a couple of a week or so, I would have thought, maybe two weeks. Um, Matt Machen is back to training again um, and uh, Ollie Robinson is still sort of up and down really. Has some good days and some bad days, so we'll see what happens with those guys. Is that looking good though with Matt Machen? Because he hasn't been around. Good to see him here. You know, he's doing some 12th man duty. Yeah, he's doing training. We're not entirely sure how he's, how he's going to pull up if he plays games and stuff, but he's, he's doing his training and he's trying to get back into it, so we'll see how that develops over the next few weeks as well. Let's talk about the next three games coming up. Yep. You know, two, two games against Leicester now, one against Gloucestershire. Sure. All, all games, I know all games are difficult, but... Yep. You said you wanted to win four out of six, Mark, and you're kind of on track for that now. Well, that was the aim, you know. So I do speak a little 
a little bit of sense occasionally. Yeah, we try to win four out of six, and that's the aim. Uh, having won two out of three now has put us in a good place to try and get those four out of six. If we do that, we then get up to get up to four wins, which is uh, which is where obviously Knotts and Kent are at the moment. So you know, there's a lot of cricket to be played. So we'll see what happens in the next three games. Now it's the final interview, Mark, that we're going to do with the fellow behind the camera. No one ever sees the fellow behind the camera. Who's uh, Adam Matthews? So quick words to Adam because he's leaving and going to Pastors New. Well, firstly, he's going to. He's going to the second best cricket ground in, in, in the UK, so I can't understand why on earth he's going to Lords. But no, we wish him all the best, and he's obviously been a great servant to us, and uh, it's been a pleasure working with him, and I wish him all the best for the future.